Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another this and that video and I have a lot going on. So let's get to it so I can show you what I've got going on. All right, so starting over here to the left because this is gonna be the title of this this and that video and that is meals from food storage. So what I have here is I have some homegrown tomatillos that I made into a salsa verde and I think I added some uh, some of my homegrown zucchini to this as well and a few other things. I have a recipe on this I'll go ahead and link to right up here and this is going to go uh, on top of this meal that I've got going on here and that is going to be tamale pie. So I've got some home canned tomatoes and then I have some uh, homegrown, home dried uh, tomato flakes and what I do with the flakes is I like to add them to the tomatoes to thicken them up so I don't have to cook them down so much to make a, a thicker sauce or even a tomato paste. I've done this for making ketchup because typically you make homemade ketchup you got to get tomato paste but you know you have to cook your tomatoes down for a long 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 time to get tomato paste and I try to avoid buying any kind of canned products when it comes to tomatoes, even the organic ones, just because of the reaction of the acids in the tomatoes to the metals in the can. It's just, it's really not great. So I always try to go with my own home canned uh, tomatoes and home dried tomatoes. So that will be the base for the sauce. I also have some kidney beans that were initially in storage as dry beans and then when I was canning up a bunch of chili what I like to do is whenever I have any excess space in the canner is I like to can up some kidney beans so basically what I do is I soak the kidney beans for at least a good 24 hours rinse them put them in the jar I think I put them about halfway up and then top it off with water work out the air bubbles and then you want to pressure can your beans uh, it, because they're not acidic and that's typically going to be 90 minutes at you know in our area that's 10 pounds of pressure on that higher elevations will need 15 pounds and maybe eventually I'll do a video on that down the road even though I try not to make my 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 channel about canning because there's so many great channels out there doing canning videos you know it it wouldn't hurt to do a few I have some but anyway this is it's all dusty this is ground beef from 2015 so I can use this as my as my meat if I'm gonna add meat you can do this vegetarian you don't have to add meat if you don't want to but we really like the ground beef in it so if you haven't canned ground beef it is really recommended say you you see a really good price on it either on the organic grass-fed uh, ground beef at the store or you're raising your own beef or you have venison or something that you ground up into a burger uh, and you have a lot and you don't know what to do with it you don't want to freeze it can it it's easy and it's really handy and oh my goodness it tastes so good right out of the jar you could just take a fork or a spoon and eat it right out of the jar so there's so many things you can do with your home canned ground meat whatever type of meat it is you know venison elk uh, whatever <laughs> So anyway, I'll be using that in there as well. And then I'll be using the last of the corn meal that we ground up from our own homegrown uh, corn. This is the uh, glass gem corn. And we did a video on grinding this up. And I'll go ahead and link to that right up here. And uh, yeah, because so, we have the corn auger that goes with our country living grain mill. And I'll link to the grain mill below. It is an expensive investment, but I highly recommend it. I love it. It was well worth it. I've been looking into grain meals for a long time and I wanted something that could run off either hand power or electricity and that was the one. So Patrick made a motor to go with it. He built the motor himself or he took a motor, rebuilt it and fixed it up to go with the grain mill and that's been really handy and saved me a lot of time in grinding. So anyway, I'll be using the last of that and back here you can see this jar of it's a white corn meal I actually got the whole corn white organic non GMO corn from Azure Standard and I'll link to that below and then we ground a bunch of it up into cornmeal because white cornmeal is really kind of hard to come by especially finding it in organic non GMO and uh, white cornmeal is really best for for making certain things like tamales and um, the cornbread that you would use for like the hillbilly style beans and cornbread. You don't use yellow cornmeal and you don't add sugar to that. It's it's like a buttermilk. It's you know it's a different kind of cornbread than what we think of in the north which is 
I think commonly the South would call it Johnny cake. But it's a very different, I had to learn all this when I married Patrick, that whoa, okay, this is all different. This is the Tar Heel way of making cornbread, and we really like it. But anyway, I do have a recipe on uh, the tamale pie, if you're interested in it, and I'll go ahead and link to that right up here. And again, it's one of those things, I change it up a little bit, and uh, you know, it can, you know, add just depending on what I have on hand. One of the things I was thinking of adding, which I forgot to bring in here, was some of my dehydrated zucchini from the garden. I dehydrated up a whole bunch of zucchini. Uh, anyway, I think that'll be good addition in there too. But the other thing I wanted to mention is I my chickens have started laying again. However, I still have a lot of eggs in the freezer from 2018, you know, when they first started laying and they really laying heavy in the spring. And so what I did was I froze up a whole bunch of eggs. I always free, freeze them in packs of two. I scramble them and freeze them in the little food saver bags. And boy, these are so handy. So when we finally ran out of eggs, the fresh ones that the chickens had laid through last year, uh, we started resorting to the these. And so that meant we couldn't have just like your standard fried egg. However, these are great in baked goods. They're great for making omelets with and all kinds of stuff. Any other thing? Oh, and perfect for making mayonnaise with. You just cut it open, squeeze it into your, your whatever receptacle you're going to use to make your mayonnaise in. And then, uh, yeah, and go from there. It makes really good mayonnaise. It seems like it works better than even the fresh eggs. So I have a video on this. I know I'm going to run out of cards. So I, I don't know what all, how many I've mentioned so far. I'll go ahead and put the link to the video up here on the eggs. Vinegar. Let's move on. I haven't talked about vinegar to this and that video in a little while, which is surprising because I usually talk about it in almost every this and that video. But right here, these two jars here that are not marked, these are my two most recent batches of vinegar. I believe one is, and I think is this one, is the lemon apple, and then this one is uh, apple. It should looks like it should be the other way around because this one's more yellow. Okay, yeah, so I just took a smell of them, and yes, this is the lemon apple, and this is the apple. Funny how that is. But anyway, so this is my most recent batches, and if you are new to vinegar making, I have a whole bunch of videos about vinegar and how to make it. The many, many uses, because you might say, well, why would you make so much vinegar? Well, because I have a whole bunch of uses for my vinegar. What I want to do, if you're new to vinegar making, is I'm going to link right here, that's my last iCard, to my most recent vinegar making. A lot of people are going back and watching my older ones when I first started the channel, like the raisin vinegar and the floral vinegar I did then. I'm doing things a little bit differently now, so I'd like to see how you how I'm doing it now because I am getting a much better result. Though I love the vinegars before, I'm getting a much better result. Absolutely no worry about mold and no need for any weight on top of the fruits or the herbs to hold them down under the water to keep them from developing mold. It's just, it's easy, it's just simply stirring every day for the first two weeks. So if you've already watched those videos, just whatever it is, even if it's the raisin one, stir it because even though it seems like I never have an issue with my raisin stain on the top and molding, some people do. Maybe it depends on the raisins you use. But anyway, you'll want to stir it because if they float to the top, they're going to mold. But even if they do, it's not a big deal. The mold that it's developing is not going to be harmful. And when you're ready to strain out your vinegar, you just lift it up and toss it. But I recommend you go through the various vinegar videos I have out there. Like the, I have one on just, you know, you can look these up by doing a search. Just the many uses of vinegar and another one on just a whole Q&A. Now these two I wanted to show you. This one is entirely lemon. And uh, what I've got here, I don't even know if you can see it now because it's floated to the bottom, is you can see the mother right there developing. And this happened after putting it in storage. And no, I don't refrigerate my vinegar. It will last for at least a year. If it's, if it's a good high acidic vinegar like it should be, then it can last at least a year in, in storage without refrigerating. And then this one has the SCOBY, you can see it right in here. It, it was on top when I pulled it out of the cabinet, but now it's floated to the bottom. So if I do decide, I'm still debating whether or not I even want to bother doing the kombucha thing. I used to make it years and years ago before it became the big popular thing. I never really cared for it, and I never really noticed a big 
difference in my health when I used it, so I quit making it. And it could be because I'm not crazy about, I don't mind vinegar, I'm just not crazy about the flavor of black teas or, you know, any true teas. I'm not, I've never been crazy about the flavor of them. But anyway, so if I do do it, these scobies right here I'm going to use to make the kombucha. I tried developing my own kombucha scoby and it started out, but for some reason it just came to a stop. I only ended up with just a really thin film and I finally just tossed it because it sat for months and it didn't do anything. Even after adding more sugar to see if that would help get it going again. No. So if I do do it, the only reason would be for the sake of people that are wanting to start making their own kombucha and don't you know, don't know where to find a kombucha scoby. Maybe nobody in your area has one. You don't want to buy one online. You can get one easily from vinegar and turn it into a kombucha scoby. It's it's a pretty easy process. I haven't actually done it yet, but I've read up about it. And I'm like, well, that's pretty pretty simple. Okay, now moving on. The other thing, all this stuff you see right here is I need to get another batch of my uh, floral infused oil going that I put in my skin cream. I will link to the how-to video on this in the end of this of this video on how to make your own herb infused oil. And again, this is what I use in my skin cream. Now, commonly I'll use the pansies. These are all these uh, herbs are from my own garden. The calendula flowers. Uh, the marshmallow leaves and flowers. There's a little bit of flowers in there. Uh, and then rose petals. And so I grow all these, I dehydrate them, and then I use them in my oil. You really want to use dehydrated herbs when you're infusing an oil, not something that is fresh. That's, that's really important. Now, the one thing I'm going to start adding, I'm going to add a fifth herb to my infused oil, and that is going to be my lavender flowers, because lavender flowers... While pansies, I don't typically always get a ton of them every year, I get tons of lavender. And um, I, I, this is actually from 2017. And we're getting going into 2019, and I still have 2017 flowers to work through. And I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere I found 2016 ones. But anyway, it, lavender is also very, very beneficial to the skin, as is all of these herbs. So I'm going to start adding that into my infused oil for making my skin cream. It'll be down the road before I actually get that uh, skin cream up on the store because I still have other oil to work through, infused oil, another skin cream to sell out on. But anyway, I wanted to give you, th that's just some options. You can do any combination you want. I typically put equal parts of each herb. And another one to consider, like if you're not going growing calendula, for instance, is dandelion flowers. Dandelion flowers are really, really good for the skin as well. So really great option. In fact, a lot of people will make a salve, like a healing salve, using the dandelion flowers. Or, or you know, the lavender or the calendula. Really, really great stuff. So, and I use, I use avocado. That's my preference. You can use olive oil, just keep in mind you don't want it to get too warm because olive oil can go rancid if it gets too hot. Where avocado is more shelf stable, that's why I prefer it for stuff like this. But grapeseed oil is another really good one. You could even consider using almond oil. Uh, I know grapeseed oil has a fairly, I don't, it's, I don't think it's as high as avocado oil, but I think it is a fairly high heat factor, you know, smoke point and all that. But I'm not sure about almond oil, but almond oil is really excellent for the skin too. But whatever oil you want to use is really up to you. It's just you got to think about, you know, how shelf stable is it going to be. And if you keep it in a cool place, you're going to be, it, it should be fine, you know, if you're using olive oil. But uh, since I like to, when I'm infusing my oils, I either do it in the greenhouse or I'll do it in the living room this time of year. Not too close to the wood stove, but not far from the wood stove. That's where my oils typically infuse. So because it stays pretty warm in that area, I definitely like to use a good stable oil for doing that. And avocado oil is excellent for the skin. And my skin cream, ever since I've been making it and using it, it has just been the best moisturizer I've ever used on my face. Now, some people may find it a little too rich for their face. Um, I know that most people that use it, though, on their face are just really, really like it. But it has other uses, too, for, like, your hands, your feet, you know, dry knees and elbows. And I also have a video to that 
I will link to on how to make your own skin cream and I'll link to that I can do one more video at the end of this I believe and if I were if I don't have room again I'll link to it in the description box below how to make your own skin cream and that will be starting with the infused oil plus some other ingredients and uh, or if you're interested you can always check out my Etsy store because I sell it on there if nothing else you may want to give it a try see if you even like it before you invest in all the ingredients to make the skin cream itself so just some thoughts now one more thing I want to talk about before I close up this video is I've been getting some really nice cards from various people uh, subscribers from YouTube uh, as condolences for my mom I want to know I want y'all to know that not just the cards but all the great comments I don't have time to respond to every single comment but I want to make sure I give it a heart so that you know that I've read it and I appreciate it thank you so much for all that it's just nice to know that you have other people that understand what you're going through and kind of feel your pain people that are praying for you people that love you and support you through all that and you know it's, it's just really helpful but anyway the other thing that I got sorry ramble ramble it is uh, this I actually got a while ago and I forgot about because I wanted to show this in a video was one of my subscribers sent me she has a, her own pattern that she wrote up she wrote it up just for me and sent it to me and it's for making these little jar covers right here isn't that cute it's got a little bit of elastic in it and a little button and a bow and so um, eventually I'll start making these I might even put some of these up on my store because she said I could <laughs> based on her pattern. I might make a little bit of a different tweak to it just to make it a little bit more me, but just, you know, because I don't like copying people's patterns directly. I like them to be more personalized to my own style. But anyway, I want that person to know how much I appreciate that and how thoughtful that was. And I love this. It is adorable. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. And if you're new to my channel, you got a lot of videos to go check out. Okay. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.